Hi. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is talk about moving full steam ahead, moving full steam ahead with game jams and promoting STEM and what I like to call STEAM, if you know about that. And I can't think of any other medium that encompasses all kinds of media types. Video, audio, print, text, the internet, if that's a medium. It also accounts for developing technology like Oculus Rift and virtual reality, leap motion controllers, full body tracking, and then it also encompasses culture and sociology. And it puts all of this into a really enjoyable context that we like to play games. Now, most of you kind of say, oh, I'm not a gamer. But you are, because if anyone hasn't played Tag or Monopoly, raise your hands. <laughs> OK. So how we're going to move full steam ahead is using a map. And that map is from Daniel Pink's TED Talk, and he's written a book about this. Mastery, autonomy, and purpose. So mastery is people, you know, like to do their work or like to be the best that they can. Autonomy is they want to have some control over that. And purpose, they want to feel like it's part of a bigger thing. Along with that, when you're trying to create motivation and get people encouraged around creative problem solving, around issues that are not so easy to solve, this is a good way to do it. Mastery, autonomy, and purpose. So why game jams? Because they're flexible. They can be paper-based. They can be on the screen. They can be card games. They can be running around. They can be done in 20 minutes. They can be done in two hours. They can be done in two weeks. They can be done in two months. And they're fun. They're fun to do. And so what is a game jam? We put a bunch of people who want to make games. And we say, here's a set of requirements. And you have this amount of time to hit your business objectives or your requirements for the game. And so even though people think that they're not creative, we all love to be secretly creative. And game jams enable us to do that very well. So what does that have to do with STEM? And STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. Well, I believe that STEM and all of its movement is pretty much critical and important for the future of our kids, the future of our country, the future of humanity. So we need to get kids interested in that. And most kids really like games. So STEAM is the art element. So we're adding art into all those really cool things. And so now, in a game jam, you have all that, naturally, just by the nature of what you're trying to create. So when you take a game jam and you line it up with some of the things from Steam, you start to see some really great things. And so when you wrap in, how are you going to use science and art? You get this equation. So you have a game jam, you add in some steam, you give them a map, and it creates that map naturally. So by kind of stirring the pot a little bit and adding these things and aligning them very, very tightly, you start to get some great things and you start to get people motivated. So how do you do this? This seems kind of hard, but really, I'm going to give you an example. So when I see something like this, I kind of run uh, because one, it's a sentence diagram. One, I don't know, even know what the sentence really says. It's hard for me to read. I don't understand why things are where they are. It's kind of confusing. So I would imagine if you're sitting in English class and your teacher says, okay, we're going to talk about this sentence diagram, most of the students' eyes start to do that glaze thing and they get a little worried. But I'm going to suggest an example of how to use a game jam in Steam in order to kind of solve a, a learning issue here. So here's the game jam. You're going to give your students this assignment. You're going to create a game that shows proper sentence structure. And so you must be able to understand what sentence structure is so the students have to do their own research because they want to make this game good. 
and they want to have some kind of reward at doing the best game, even if it's just bragging rights. So they're going to go and figure out how to do this. So you've already given them a purpose, and they're happy with that. So then the next thing is mastery. Part of the game requirements, well, you have to know what a proper sentence structure looks like, and you have to be able to correct sentences that are not. And so maybe you attach some points to that. And so now they have a purpose. They have mastery over this subject because they're going to know exactly how to form a correct sentence diagram and certain structure. And they're going to enjoy doing it rather than looking at that chart I showed you earlier. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And so the autonomy part is that the students decide on how to create the game. They get to make the rules. They get to make the way players get to interact with it. It may be a card game that they get to align certain cards that are dealt with into creating a proper sentence. It could be a screen-based game where they're walking around an environment and they have to find the correct parts of their sentences in their environment. So it's up to them how they want to do it. So where's the steam, right? Because we're aligning game jams with steam, so we have to align this part up. So in moving full steam ahead with the game jam, science, it's about the world around us, right? How shapes and colors interact people's behaviors. It's about learners who may understand things better audibly, or if they read it, or if they see it, or if they get to touch and feel with it, right? And then technology, that's an easy one for me because I work in a college of technology. So there's things that they're going to use, creative software that they get to play with, uh, game engines that they can put this into, art, or I'm sorry, engineering. So engineering, how does all this stuff work together? How do you design this interaction? How are you going to design the technology and all of the other elements to fit together to make a playable game? It's not that easy. It's kind of hard. And that engineering element presents a really good challenge for them. And then on the art side, well, like I said, people love to be creative. So they're going to generate art for maybe if they're using a card-based game to generate the backs of the cards, what the characters are in the game, what the environment looks like in their 3D engine. And so then the math. How are you going to score? How many different variations of your sentences can you make with this set of words? How many words are you going to have? All of those metrics of, did the game do what it's supposed to do? So my question for you is, what examples can you think of? I had a science teacher in high school, and it was in biology, and he ran the entire course like a game of Jeopardy. Now, the payoff was, if you got to a certain level of points at the end of your semester, or before the end of the semester, you didn't have to take the semester exam. So I hate tests. So I was answering questions left and right. And it was the most enjoyable high school biology course I ever had. It was the only one, but that's beside the fact. Um, some of the things that I like to do at home is I can't get my kids to clean up after themselves. So we may do a game. We may say, hey, what would make you guys want to clean your room? And they're like, nothing. <laughs> so, you know, what if there was Twizzlers involved? Mm. Maybe a cookie or maybe a new game. Then they have their attention. And so they get to write the rules on how they get to clean their room, which is good for me. There's other things, like in your organization, are there areas where you have a hard subject to broach? How are you going to get your team motivated in order to come up with a solution? Are you going to do a slide stack? Or would you much rather have people play a game? So there's all kinds of areas where doing a game jam as an exercise in creativity and problem solving and creative solutions really starts to pay off. And there's a lot of good productive stuff that happens in there. So I'm going to challenge you. How are you going to do this? How are you going to implement your own game jams? Um, th there's just too much opportunity to not take advantage of this. So, you've done your game jam. You've got your students or your organization ready to play this game. They've finished and they met their requirements and they have something that's playable. So now, did you define the problem well enough for them? If you didn't, 
Maybe you need to inject that throughout the process. So if they're straying down a path, you can define that problem a lot better and start to refine what they're working towards. The next thing is, what are the requirements that you're going to give them that this game must do? So now that you have the problem, how are you going to solve it? This is the business objective. This is the learning metric. This is the outcome that you want for your game jam. Constraints. Is it two days? Is it a homework assignment? Is it an afternoon? Talk about those things and how they affected the decisions that they're going to have to make. And then finally, play it. Once you built it, play it. See if it's actually doing what you want it to do. And if it's not, maybe it's time to redo it and have fun with it again. Find out about what went wrong, what went really, really well, and iterate. So you must do these things after and during and before the game jam. I kind of went backwards there. Make you think. So take a look at how you can use game jams in your organization, with your family, with your students, and all across the board because it's a really wonderful opportunity to give people that map, that mastery. They know what they're talking about, that autonomy. They get to make the decisions and the purpose that this thing's going to do something greater than what they could do by themselves or just by, by one person making a change in the group can direct where everything can go forward from there. So, like real jam, use it sparingly or it may ruin your toast. So you shouldn't do this for every single problem like, you know, oh, I can't find my car keys, let's have a game jam. So you have to use it kind of sparingly and you want to use it at the most appropriate time because if you do use it right, your students, your organization will want to be a part of that game jam. They will want to say, man, I can't wait to take this class because did you hear? There's a game jam, we get to make a game. And that's super fun, it's super engaging. It gives the students, your organization, your team members, your family, that motivation to really start to do some really great things. So with that, go out and make some really cool stuff. I look forward to it. Thank you.